We all fall short, we all fail. But you always have the ability at some point to wake up and go, man, this is, this is not who I wanna be. This is not what I was put here to do. This is not what my philosophy wants me to be. And then you gotta fight your way back. It was only like a couple weeks ago that it, it hit me, signing a bunch of books for a group. And this, this line came to me from meditations from Marcus Aurelius. Marcus was writing to himself, he said, Fight to be the person that philosophy tried to make you. My sort of version of that is fight to be the person that philosophy wants you to be. And if we think about Marcus Aurelius, that's really like the mission of his life. So Marcus Aurelius is a regular person, like all of us. He had desires, he had ambitions. He was a good person, and yet he was in this position, which we know, uh, as, as the famous dictum goes, that absolute power corrupts absolutely. Martin Luther King said this too. He said, within all of us, there's a north of our soul and a southern part of our soul. And he said, these two things are at war with each other. If you know anything about the life of Martin Luther King, as great and magnificent and wise and, and brave and just as he was, there was a baser part of him too. And these parts are in conflict. And I was just thinking, if I wanted to sum up my writing, if I wanted to sum up what was important to me, what I'm trying to do in my life, it would be that. I'm trying to fight to be the person that Stoicism wants me to be, that it's possible for me to be through Stoicism if I do the work, if I stay true, if the north of my soul wins out over the south of my soul. The first step in winning that war would be defining our terms, right? In meditations, there's this section where Marcus lists what he calls the epithets for the self. He says, upright, modest, straightforward, sane, cooperative. We could probably add the, the four stoic virtues to that too. I, I carry this, this coin in my pocket of the four stoic virtues, which we, ha we have in the Daily Stoic store. But the, the four stoic virtues are courage, justice, wisdom, and moderation. That's who I want to be in this situation. Those are the traits that I want to embody in this decision that I'm making, in this opportunity that I'm embarking on, in this risk that I'm about to take, in this tempting, difficult, stressful moment that I'm in. How do, how do I embody those things? There's another part of that. Um, Seneca says we have to choose ourselves a Cato. He says, choose someone who you would like to be like and then ask yourself, what would they do in this situation? For Seneca, it's Cato. He says, choose yourself a Cato. At, at Seneca's last moment, when, 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 when Nero comes to kill him, it's Cato that Seneca channels, that, that, that he draws upon. It's, it's where he gets his strength. Seneca says, you know, without a ruler, you can't make crooked straight. This is what I was trying to write about in Lives of the Stoics, is like, how did the Stoics actually live? What were their lives like? So then we can try to make crooked straight against that. The other part about it, I think is like, if you're just winging it through life, if you're just going day to day, how are you going to know if you actually are getting there? So I think, you know, for Marcus Aurelius, meditations was his active, almost hand-to-hand -hand spiritual combat for trying to become who philosophy was trying to make him. He was writing in these pages every day about where he was falling short, about what he could do better. It's an ongoing war that you're fighting and it's not, can't just be in your head. Journaling is a big part of this. Epictetus says, every day and night keep thoughts like these at hand, write them, read them aloud, talk to yourself and others about them. That's what journaling is, right? Um, every day I do the Daily Stoic Journal, I have two other journals, but I, I, I think of journaling as me actively fighting to be the person that philosophy wants me to be. Seneca talks about putting the day up for review each evening. This isn't like just for career purposes. This is for interrogating and analyzing his soul. It's holding himself accountable. It's looking at what he can do better, what he needs to do better, where he's falling short, where he's not living up to the philosophy. In some ways, it would be easier to be the person that philosophy wants you to be if you just retreated to your library, to your study, and you just focused on your books. But that's another thing Marcus says. He says, throw away your books, get active in life's purpose now. The Stoics talk derisively about the so-called pen and ink philosophers, the academic philosophers, 
the sophists. Um, when Marcus is fighting to be the person that philosophy wants him to be, it's in the ultimate testing ground. It's, it's as the emperor, the ruler of the known world. The battle can't just be an academic one. It can't just be a battle in your mind. It has to be a battle you're actively engaged in in the world along the lines of the Stoic principles. What are you doing? You have to be actively fighting to be the person philosophy wants you to be in your job, in your community, in your neighborhood, in your country, in the time and place that you live. We know what philosophy wants us to be. We know it wants us to be courageous, to be temperate, to be just, to be wise. We know who our inspirations are. We have a Cato, a Marcus Aurelius. Maybe it's your grandfather or grandmother. Maybe it's a great athlete in, in your field or it's, a, it's, it's some mentor you have. You know who you're trying to be. But then the other reality is that we're, we're gonna fall short of it. We all fall short, we all fail. And this is another big part, which is that you gotta pick yourself back up when you fail. As they say in the Bible, fall down seven, get up eight. But, but Marcus says, you know, when you lose the rhythm, he says, come back to it. He says, that's gonna happen. You're gonna be jarred unavoidably by circumstances. You're gonna have an impulse you give into. Your temper is gonna get the best of you. Fear is gonna get the best of you. Uh, ambition might lead you astray, but you always have the ability at some point to wake up and go, man, this is, this is not who I want to be. This is not what I was put here to do. This is not what my philosophy wants me to be. And then you got to fight your way back, right? This is a lifelong fight we are in. Marcus is even talking about this towards the end of meditations. He's like, how old are you? How much longer are you going to keep falling short? When are you going to get this together? It was the battle of his life as it was for Martin Luther King. Up until the day he died, he was struggling with his ambitions and his egos, with his temptations and his Christian ideals, but he fought his way back. That's what we have to do. That's what I'm trying to do. It is a battle. It doesn't come naturally. It doesn't come easy. It's part of us. It's there. We all have the good part. We all have the north of our soul, but we have the other part too. And the other part is prepared. The other part is strong and, and, and the other part will win if we don't give it everything we got. So thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, I do suggest journaling, really important. Study the, study the lives of the Stoics. Um, it's great to have a model. And then of course, remember, remember the four virtues, courage, justice, temperance, and wisdom. Hey, it's Ryan Holiday. Every day I send out an email inspired by the best Stoic wisdom, Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, Epictetus, all designed to help you live a better life. That's what I'm trying to do. The email takes five minutes to read. Over 300,000 people get it. That's the largest community of Stoics ever in the history of the world. I'd love to have you check it out. Totally free, unsubscribe whenever you want, but I think you'll like it. Sign up at dailystoic.com email.